so welcome to the DJ Force X podcast, everyone. Um, as we're in uh, the month of October, we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the podcast. So it's been going for 10 years, and I've got a very special guest on this episode. I have Kieran Crook from the band The Sherlocks. Welcome, Kieran. Thank you, mate. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Having me. <laughs> That's all right. Absolutely my pleasure. It's um it's great to have because I like I'm I'm kind of diversifying, if you will, in the sort of like people that I speak to, because generally I have um well the main person sort of thing is like heavy metal rock musicians uh on the show. Um and I, I have a love for indie and rock and roll and all that kind of stuff from my youth. And and when I heard you guys, I was like, I really like this. I I heard your your last album, uh, which came out last year, the uh, people like me and you, um, and I really liked it. And and I heard tracks on um, like Radio X and stuff like that. And and obviously I got sent tracks by uh, the the PR agents and things like that. And I've just sort of been following tracking you guys for a little while. And uh, yeah, this opportunity came up. You've got you've released a couple of new tracks um, in the pretense of releasing an album, which we'll talk about um, soon. Uh, you've also got a nice big UK tour coming up, which we'll also talk about, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was, um, it, yeah, welcome to the show. Again, I, it was just kind of like, I just want to give people kind of a download because I've been kind of getting different types of guests on um, yeah. and and to sort of like flex my my passion for indie uh, is great because um, I grew kind of grew up well in my teenage years along with the sort of like new metal phase it's not a phase i love that stuff i still do now um i also grew up listening to a lot of indie so at the time i think it was classed as brit pop or whatever but um you know the big bands oasis blur um uh trying to think of the others i mean there's bands like skunk and Nancy on the heavier side um bands like shed seven who you're going out on tour with um and cast and stuff like that um those are the sort of like bigger ones but um yeah um and and to have you guys on the show uh is great because you remind me of that era <laughs> primarily um but your music is fantastic i've gone back and listened to uh your past you've, you're you're on your well you've got four albums out technically yeah, yeah. So, um but what i'd <laughs> like to do first just so i can get a little bit of background myself and also my listeners and viewers and whatnot um just a bit of the origin story of the sherlock's like how you guys came about because yeah, you know, like I say, you've been around for a little while. You've kind of been flying under the radar, but um, yeah, what what's your kind of like story? Yeah, well, we we started in two thousand and ten, which is still mental to me that we've been yeah. doing it this long. But it's, when when you're within it, I suppose you just you just I don't know you you you're cracking on and you there's constantly something to do. Like at minute, it's actually a bit weird for the next month, basically until we joined Shed Seven halfway through November. Yeah, we've actually got time off, which is it's weird for us. Uh, but yeah, we started in 2010. Um, we two other members actually. So me and Brandon. Brandon's a drummer. I'm the singer and guitar. Um, we started originally in 2010 with two other brothers. Um, did the first two records with them, and then just as we were going into COVID, what year was that? 2020. 2020. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Josh and Andy at the time, it, nothing to do with COVID, weirdly. Just said, like, we we want to move on and, uh, I suppose, get normal jobs because this isn't really a normal job or yeah. it, it doesn't yeah. feel like it is. <clears throat> and then, uh, then COVID hit, which were just, again, bizarre. Um, but songwriting became easier for me, I think, just because I had so much time. Yeah. And then, obviously, me and Brandon were having conversations like, right, if we were to carry on, it wasn't even a question. Like we, we wanted to carry on. Yeah. Like we we're going to need a bass player and a guitar player. And then basically, long story short, as our sound engineer recommended both. Um, he used to be in a band with our guitar player now, Alex. Yeah. Um, yeah. As as sound engineer, he used to be in a band with him. And then I think he used to be a teacher. Okay. Um, not Alex. Nick, the guy who's recommended him, yes, uh, he used to teach Trent, and then yeah, we we uh, got him for like a an audition kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, but the same guy who'd been um, backlining for us the year before on a couple. Okay. of it's a weird like turn of events, but um, yeah, instantly knew they're in. Uh, 
both different characters. Trent's super, super chilled. Alex is just bouncing off at walls, but it's a, it's a good dynamic. And yeah. uh, and then yeah, did his third album, Will They Understand? Cracked straight on we uh, the fourth album, People Like Me and You, and then here we are, the fifth album now. It's bad. He's he's actually a bit crazy because <clears throat> in the space uh, before before these two joined, we did two albums in ten years and and all the gigs and then now that these have joined it's mad that way we're already on a third album with it. it's fifth album but yeah third album with trent and alex crazy so you just you found like that obviously the songwriting process you kind of you're getting more um say instant inspiration but you've kind of got that kind of like momentum with writing i think so yeah i, I don't know if subconsciously a lot of it's to do with feeling like you've lost time you know like when yeah. Yeah. COVID happened and stuff like that and and even like for me and Brandon I think we look back now and think we took too long at getting that second album out as well okay <clears throat> even though it weren't it weren't ages but it were it were longer than we wanted to be moving at the pace we are now so yeah. I, I suppose yeah. we're sort of in the driving seat um so we just yeah we like Brandon will just say, as soon as we finished an album, basically we're constantly thinking about the next thing, and that's kind of what happened with this. Um, what's happened with? To be fair, it happens like every album. Brandon yeah. will say, "You got any songs?" I'll be like, "Yeah, I've got these," and and they're never fully fleshed out songs. It's just like a, an idea. It could be a, a verse melody, or there might just be a chorus, uh, and that's enough for him to. They're like, yeah, they sound good. And then I often have to finish the songs in studio, but yeah, it's good fun. Oh, no, that's good. That's, I mean, it, it's nice to have that kind of like running um, inspiration and running kind of like songwriting. And like you say, you found a pace that you're kind of comfortable with at the moment. Uh, and obviously, looking back, you kind of look at the sort of time frame you had before and, you know, two album and what was it, 10 years or so. It was just kind of, there is a gap between it. And, you know, as a band, you do, you change a lot in that time. And sometimes it can end up overthinking what you're doing next as well, if you leave it long enough. Yeah. Uh, but if you feel like the 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 output you're putting out now, which is is very good, I enjoy the. Uh, we'll talk about the two tracks you've kind of from the new album in a moment, but um, those tracks are particularly good. Um, yeah, and, and like following on from the previous album. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, it, it's just like it's a nice progression. I can hear it. It's great. Well, thank you. Um, it, it, people always say like, "Oh, I can tell it's it's gone this way or gone that way." For for us, it's it's always really really hard because I, I seem to approach it the same way well i do I, i'll often write them on a whatever's whatever's here like uh, i'll write some on a bass guitar or usually it's the acoustic uh never finish never rarely finish a song just like just get enough to be excited about it and then i'll can it and not even touch it for a few weeks but the sound on these two, I don't know. I think the both sound completely different. Like the first single, Death of Me, is like not really like anything we've done, I don't think. It feels a bit, I don't know. <laughs> it felt a bit weird at the time, but that was the one I played, Brandon. Uh, I played it with my dad, actually, and they were both like, yeah, that's good. That that could be the first single kind of thing. Nice. And then, uh, I don't know if I prefer Man on the Loose, to be fair. I feel like that's bang, like, into our, I don't know, I don't want to say safe, because, you know, like, when you know you can do something, like, yeah. as a band, I feel like that's kind of our thing. No, it's, it's maybe, it's not, it's definitely not heavy, but it's, um, as you mentioned, like, the Britpop thing, it's almost got, like, a bit of a Oasis feel to it, which I quite like. I love bands like that. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I heard from it as well. It's like it's kind of I like I like to sort of like rock and roll because the indie thing kind of happened, Britpop things kind of happened. There's always a resurgence of these things. Obviously, with Oasis coming back for this thing they're doing, and Blur doing their Wembley stuff the year, previous year and all that. So, you know, there's definite hunger for it, but there's also definite hunger for for new bands doing this. I mean, I don't. I, it's difficult to class you as a new band. To me, you are a new band because I'm a recent fan. Of yeah. It obviously you've got a back catalogue as well which is fantastic you know you, like you said you go back to like 2010 uh when you guys started so um but obviously you are influenced by that 
genre that that movement at the time i can hear it in the music there's you know there's twangs of like of of like the more modern stuff so you got like the arctic monkeys and um uh like bands like like the the bands from the early or the indie sleaze i think it was is the the term they use these days for that 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 era of rock yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a good like it's good like rock music, rock rock and roll music. It's modern day rock and roll music. That's how. Yeah, I like it. that's it. That's, I think that's fair to say. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. It's just um, like growing up, I was I was into Oasis and stuff, but not just just Oasis. I'd say my favorite band were probably because Oasis weren't really my time technically. Yeah. Like I think Morning Glory were out when I was born. Like the finished okay. thing. I suppose I were getting more into him just as they'd finished probably in 2009, yeah. whatever it was. Uh, but my band growing up, were all, I were obsessed with Libertines. Oh, okay. Yeah. At school, I, I just absolutely loved it. I'd listen to him every every day on repeat, Def, um, Def on the Stairs. And yeah. Loved him. Um, Brandon, he's two and a half, three years older than me, so he... He can remember the Arctic Monkeys. I, I, I mean, I can, but he can remember like it starting like someone yeah. sent him a tune going, listen to this kind of thing. And then, yeah, Libertines. But it sort of worked in reverse because Libertines are before thingy, but I never like, I didn't really catch the Arctic Monkeys thing until probably they were on the second album. I, I yeah. feel like Brandon, as soon as it started, you were on it kind of thing. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the time, Arctic Monkeys was very difficult to ignore because they were being played everywhere. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Don't worry. It's the season. Because, um, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'm old enough to remember, obviously, the Arctic Monkeys, I'm, I'm old enough to remember a lot of bands coming through. So I was born in 1980. So, you know, there's there's been a lot of music in that time. Um, but, yeah, no, I remember a lot of that stuff. And especially, I mean, the indie movement, that was kind of what I was into in my early teens or the Brit, whatever they want to call it, Britpop movement. Um, and, and you know, bands like Blur, Oasis, Pulp, you know, all the big bands that are still around today. Um, there's a lot of bands that kind of had their sort of flash moments and then went away, um, sort of the more rockier side, like Republica. And um, I'm trying to remember bands from back then. I'm trying to, like, uh, and I can't. Um, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, but, yeah, no, it's 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 great to hear. Like, it's like, because I'm very much into my, like, new metal sound. I was very much part of that um that that movement uh in the sort of heavy music side of things in the early sort of late 90s early 2000s i was in a band and all that kind of stuff um yeah. and seeing the resurgence of that so obviously this we still got some of the classic bands from back then um you know corn limbiscuit slipknot all that lot all the sort of big main ones but there's a lot of bands now that have come out of that that were influenced by that and i love this like kind of resurgence the same with the indie brit pop thing as well um there's i mean there's all it, britain has always had great rock bands don't get me yeah. wrong uh throughout you know you can go back 50s 60s you know there was like we were like the forefront of of pop rock i would suppose is the word um and then prog rock to be fair um but yeah i mean like hearing bands like yourselves these days like really take that sound or that what 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 has happened then and make it your own as well because it's like obviously i'm comparing a lot of bands to you guys at the moment but you do have your own sound like you're not just, you know, you're not a carbon copy of certain <clears throat> sounds. There's very there's a, there's a bunch of elements that come into your music. Um, that's yeah. like kind of where I'm kind of digging into, if you will, when I'm chatting to you, um, just to see where you guys came from, because you know, you're you are relatively new to me, and I just kind of want to get that background. But no, it's nice to hear you've got got that varied kind of um, uh, background and influence on that front, which is great and bands like libertines are great they've always been like great live bands as well yeah well we're into a bunch of different stuff to be fair like i think i'm probably this is what i'm trying to do less of like uh ask that question like does it sound like us i think ultimately while ever i'm singing and everybody's doing their individual job it will end up sounding like us but yeah. it's it's certainly I mean, I don't know what you did in your band, if you were the songwriter or whatever, but it's certainly a tricky, sometimes it's easy to overthink stuff and I overthink everything with songs. Like I do ask that question, like, does it sound like us? And then it's only when you get in studio and record it, you think, yeah, of course it does. Like, Yeah. 
No, I kind of, I kind of doubt. I did get involved in some of the songwriting, but I was more of the kind of like take what was written and pick, sort of pick it apart, and you know maybe keep elements stuff. I was kind of like the post edit type thing. Yeah. Um, but I was, I was the like DJ in the band, so my role was say minimal, but you know it was kind of like I was always there when they're in the studio, so I helped with all that kind of stuff and just sort of being a sort of separate ear away from them writing yeah. big riffs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah. Um, and then eventually, you know, we had a sound, you know, and like you say, that that question does come up. Does it sound like us? And half the time you're like, it doesn't matter. But then other times you start to overthink it, like you said, and it's just, but then eventually yeah. like, if we're all playing what we're playing, then it will sound like us. It, yeah. It, it will sound like, or, I mean, it's not a bad question to ask. Like, does it sound like us, or have I literally just ripped a, another song off? But um, and, then, and then it'll just sound like your cover of their song. But yeah, um, I don't know. I think uh, I think the more the the longer we go on, and the more albums we do, I've just started to like trust the process and think, no, nah, it will. There's no wrong with taking uh, inspiration from bands or, or even specific songs. Like, I think it's good to sometimes think hear a song and it, it feels fresh even yeah. if it's a song you've known for years like sometimes it just puts you in mood and you think to yourself I want to write a tune like that and then yeah. that's how it starts and then is, yeah. send it Alex and Alex will he might come up with a different riff to what I, I I just won't come up with that and then that ends up we end up keeping it and uh, yeah it, it's good I mean a lot of the time I'll just try and write ed, like not everything but like I'll write bass lines a lot, of, a lot of like guitar lines, drums. I, I dabble in it, but often Brandon will want to do something completely different. And then we, Alex and Trent, I'll just be like, "Look, this is what I've come up with. That's the demo. Yeah, figure out what you like and keep it if you want, and then nice. think of something else." But no, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's the it's the best way of doing it as well because you know you've got that open collaboration as well. So you're not necessarily like you know the sole songwriter where it's like this is how it's got to be sometimes you might like put that foot down because you really want to make this song but having that open collaboration with other musicians just it's it it just creates that better atmosphere and you know you could like you say you've got to trust that process as well so um which is awesome um but yeah obviously you've got the two tracks that we've already mentioned death of me and man on the loose uh which is coming from your album um uh which is out next year it's called everything must make sense uh, and it's coming out in February next year, February 21st. Um, so anyone looking out for it, obviously look out for the tracks, go listen to the tracks, but look out for that album. Um, and so what what can we kind of expect from the album? Obviously, we've heard those two tracks. And you know, say one of them, um, it was Death of Me, wasn't it? You said it was very kind of like different from the previous album. But whereas Man on the Loose was more sort of within the Sherlock's kind of wheelhouse yeah. if you will is that is that sort of like a teaser to more of the album like you've got a couple of tracks that are more like say experimental but kind of like outside or expanding on previously yeah a, a little bit but i think i think the last i think it, to be fair if you look through all of his albums um i think they've always been varied albums to be fair you know you get them bands sometimes where they'll make a a very like concise it, not to say every tune sounds the same, but basically that kind of thing where you think, right, they know how to do that and they've done that 10, 12 times and made a record. Yeah. I've never really been that good at doing that, to be fair. Like, <laughs> I've wrote like a tune like that and then I'll write one that's completely different. And then the biggest challenge in early days might be writing a good, what we call slow song or yeah. like a, a ballad or something, trying to write a good one of them. And then it, once you've done that, like in the head, I sort of tick it off and think, all right, well, we know we can do that then. Yeah. Let's try to tune like this. And then it's all just like trial and error sort of thing. But um, I don't know. I think this one's the same again. It's very varied. Like there's a tune on there called Bones. And that's like, I mean, it's not far off drum and bass, to be fair. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there's, a that. there's a song called 28. That's like, a slow, like, uh, I've got a name right now, certain style of music. Um, I don't know, I, I won't remember, but it's like quite dreamy. And that's a that's that's a big, big tune. Um, the single, 
Uh, not the single, sorry. The the there's a song called Everything Must Make Sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's pretty strokesy. There's a lot of stuff. A lot of but, um, yeah, a lot of good, a lot of good tunes. And the oh. biggest thing for me has always been like the melody. Actually, having a having a chorus and not just not just like getting a song through on production and effects. Yeah. Like actually have a good song underneath it all. Nice. Well, I look forward to hearing it. Obviously, I'll be getting the singles as and when they're released as well. So I'll get that build up to it. Um, so obviously, you know, the plan at the moment, you've got you've got a couple of singles out. Are there any more singles on the way? Obviously, there's probably one just before the album. But have you got anything, a plan around the tour or anything like that? that we'll talk I mean, about? I'd, I'd like to, I'd, I'm sure there'll be another. I'd, I'd like to have a, a couple if we can. Okay. I got out while well, February, so. Yeah. I don't actually know myself. I know the definite. I know what the next one is, but hopefully we can do another as well. Get, nice. get four singles from it. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, like I said, I look forward to hearing them um, and and all that kind of stuff. But let's talk about the tour you got coming up. We shed seven, um, which is amazing. Another band from back then uh, that are still going now. Uh, their their album, I think, it was uh, Maximum High um, that they released back in back in when I was young, uh, late nineties or whatever. Um, <laughs> absolutely iconic album on that front. And they've, they've, they've released albums in, in the meantime as well. Cause a lot of these bands kind of drifted away. Um, but they released a, they've already released an album this year as well as re-recording. Um, like they they did a kind of best of re-recording. I think it was as well, like the liquid gold, I think it was called. Um, but you are off on tour in November and December. Um, yeah. and looking at the dates, most of them are sold out or low tickets. Yeah, um, I mean that must be amazing in itself. Like, because a lot of those venues are, I know you've played some like festivals and stuff like that, and, and obviously you've toured before. But stepping out into a already kind of, I'd say ninety percent sold out tour so far. Yeah, must be an amazing yeah. feeling. It's it's gonna be good, you know, because it's um, well, it's not our gig for a start, so. Yeah. We we kind of not really. I suppose we haven't really got anything to lose apart from having a stinker and playing bad every night. And then, <laughs> then we have. But uh, now, like you say, we've got a ready made crowd. We we big fans of Shed Seven anyway. To be fair, I don't think we we maybe shared a festival stage and we spoke briefly, maybe just just to Rick. But yeah, it'd be nice to um, to see him in person and actually hang out with him and. Yeah. And play each night, but um, yeah, we'll be doing a short set, I'd imagine, probably half an hour, 45 minutes max. And yeah. then, so it's kind of just go out, hit them with your best stuff, and uh, and just pick up fans, hopefully. Yeah, um, so we'll see, we'll see, see how it goes. It's a yeah, long tour, mean, it is a long tour. I mean, you're playing pretty much every major city in the UK. Um, but I'm looking at the dates now, so I'm just going to rattle them off. I've got Sheffield, Cardiff. Liverpool, Halifax, Hull, Aberdeen, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Leicester, Margate, Bristol, Newcastle, Leeds, Oxford, Lincoln, Stockton, Manchester, Birmingham, Norwich, Cambridge, Bournemouth, Nottingham, and you're finishing in London at the um, Brixton Academy, or O2 Brixton Academy. Um, and it's all the O2 venues as well you're playing, which again... Yeah. It's amazing because they're great sizes as well. Um, so a lot of them, you know, a lot of the shows are already sold out. I'm not going to go through the ones that sold out. Some of them are low tickets, uh, and I'm assuming the ones without any brackets after them, there's still tickets available as well. So, um, you know, uh, everyone go look up the tickets, obviously, because uh, not only are you going to get the wonderful Sherlock's, you're going to get Shed 7 as well um, <laughs> on that. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, that tour looks amazing. I mean, there's there's some venues on there that I've been to, and, and yeah, they're great venues. Um and I hope the tour. I mean, I hope the tour treats you well on that respect as well, because I think you're a great match for Shed Seven and their fans. And I think it's like, you know, go out there, give them, give them your best, and then you know, make some new fans. Basically, I think that's what you can get from this. Um, yeah. but build that momentum up to the album as well. Um, so obviously, post this. I don't want to like, you know, take this completely out. But are you guys doing anything on your own as well? Have you got any like? Of your own shows lined up or potentially lined up, sort of. Not this year. Not until. Not until next year. Um, okay. Yeah, it's been it's been a bit of a mad year to be fair. Because 
it's, it's like being a year off kind of thing, but while still keeping busy, like we've definitely been busy, but um, yeah, when we come to tour, uh, we're probably not, it's probably been over a year. Yeah. Well, we, well, we haven't done a UK tour this year and we've uh, been to Europe, been to Port and Keen, a lot of support stuff this year, really. Yeah. And then obviously being uh, the early part of the year, being in studio, but support yeah. On a full European tour, then we got invited back to do free outdoor gigs in Germany, um, and then yeah, this shed seven. That's that's like what it's four right. months isn't it, a gig. So nice way to end the year, though. To be fair, I'm I'm really really looking forward to it. Just like I say, short sets, go out, smash it every night. Yeah, and pick up that- fans like like you, you mentioned. I'd like to think we are a good fit for shed seven fans, like. They're, they're a proper band, hard workers. Yeah. Um, I think in many ways, a lot of people have said that they're probably, because obviously I weren't following them back in the 90s, but um, they're probably as big as ever. Yeah. As ever I, I was going to say, like, the level of venue they're playing here, like, and like I said, they never really went away. They, they, they just they released albums and they they had a core their core audience and you know from from a mainstream perspective you know obviously you know radio 1 didn't play their newer stuff or anything like that but then we've got we've got other other outlets for music now and so people can like who are into them then can rediscover them again uh which is awesome i mean i always go back and listen to old albums these the turntables behind me they do get used and i've got records of <laughs> various bands that i listen to um but yeah, no, Shed Seven, like I said, never really went away. And 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 I, you know, occasionally listen to the likes of Radio X and stuff like that, who, you know, specialise in that guitar music. And I, I'll hear a track of theirs occasionally creep into the playlist. Like I heard yours, I think it was on, I want to say it was on John Kennedy's show, um, Exposure, I think it was. Oh, yeah. I can't remember when it was, but I remember because I remember from the from the from your album before the um, people like me and you, um, and and sort of listening to it I remember getting sent some stuff from the one of the press companies and stuff like that so um and it's like i always listen out on the radio radio is like a you know i don't know it's not a dying format <laughs> if that makes sense but it was a for, it's a format i still listen to i used to have my own radio show on another station and stuff so it's something i enjoyed used to enjoy doing and i still enjoy listening to radio because of the varied playlists to a certain degree yeah. um, and there's no there's no i don't have to think about what's put on in the car so, <laughs> so, so um but yeah i mean like obviously like radio x and stuff they 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 cater for bands like yourselves obviously radio one do to a certain degree but obviously there are trends and all that kind of stuff that they really focus on um but you've got like rock shows and indie shows and specialist shows and stuff you can kind of get in on that but no that tour i think would be great i mean obviously leading up to the album and stuff like um i was going to mention the king tour as well actually it's in my notes but um how did, did that go all right like just through europe with them and did you get a good response unreal honestly class i, I think the first thing to mention about keen is just how nice they are as people yeah. like probably well not probably definitely the nicest band we've toured with by far they all just go that extra mile you know like, i think each band member individually came up at different points on different gigs just off their own back and just like said oh thanks for doing these shows and um uh, yeah like i, I can hey. remember we played in uh might have been dublin and then the rider looked a bit suspicious like a bit too better than what we even asked for like yeah. some beers and some water and we're we're good to go and they were like <laughs> champagne and bottles of wine and they were like oh we just thought we'd we just want to say thank you and like Jesus. Oh, but yeah, honestly, true professionals and uh, obviously because we are say Tom's voice is just yeah. on another level. But even even it's just a night. We just some nice moments like backstage in might have been Paris and stuff like that. Just even and warm up and they they don't mess around. Like they'll warm up for like forty five minutes an hour as yeah. a band. Like, like practically doing a gig before they do the gig and it really just shows you at next level like there's a reason yeah. why we've got that big yeah no i mean it's it's nice to hear that they are genuinely nice people as well because you hear stories about bands and stuff and you know not that i've heard anything about king or shed seven for that matter um <laughs> but it's always nice to sort of hear 
you know, firsthand that they are genuinely nice people and they're, you know, they're professionals, they're passionate about what they do and they're passionate about the people around them as well, um, which is really important because, you know, what they say, like a rising tide, you know, raises all ships and stuff. So helping you guys helps them, helping, you know, you you playing with other bands, you know, and it just, it just keeps going. And that's how it sh the music scene should be. It, you know, otherwise it gets competitive and shitty and that's no fun for anyone. So yeah, that's, 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 that's right. You should, um, we should all be trying to just pick each other up and then obviously yeah. the, the industry or whatever just thrives anyway. If yeah. you're all helping each other, obviously you've got to help yourself first and, and try and get your band going, but we're, we're constantly doing it. Like trying to make playlists or trying to invite new bands yeah. on top and stuff like that. And it, yeah, it's good to do. That's, that's what my band should yeah. be doing. That's what they should be doing. It's, it's definitely what they should be doing. Um, well, I've got a couple of questions left for you and I'll let you get on the rest of your night because and I've kept you a little bit long. Um, but um, these are more about yourself anyway, but while you've kind of already, I think, might have already kind of semi answered this earlier on, but um, I want specifics. So, what I'd like to know is uh, your three most pivotal records in your life. So, not necessarily your favorite, but the yeah. one that kind of made you want to play guitar, made you want to sing, made you want to be in a band, or influenced you in some other way. But if there's, if you can pick three in particular, albums or songs, um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm after at this point. Uh, up the bracket. Libertines. Nice. That's um three albums. Then probably something like maybe a James <laughs> record. I know again they're like an older band for me, yeah. but I've always probably like a, a best of or something. Okay. Like the best of album by James. I I love that band. Um, yeah fantastic band actually um i've seen them live a couple of times in the past and my wife's a huge fan of them so and then just quality and then um some vinyls down here yeah go uh, for it <laughs> like uh, uh, maybe, uh <laughs> i don't know probably i'm trying to think of some of that's more realistic, like when I was okay. growing up. Just one of them, but probably, probably um, an Arctic Monkeys record. Okay. Just again, because it's from it's from the area where from. Yeah. Give it all take a couple of miles, um, and at that time, like you say, you couldn't really escape it. Uh, I know it's cliche from where we are. We often get compared to them and stuff, but um, I'd be lying. If not, because yeah. they are, they were just massive when when uh, I was younger. I mean, and, obviously, being in in the Yorkshire area that you are, you know, and that, being from, I mean, there's a few bands that have come out of there that have been. Yeah. What part of Yorkshire are you guys actually in? We sort of like in between Rotherham, Barnsley, Sheffield, and Doncaster. Well, that's yeah, we, yeah, we're from. Is. I suppose it's like, is it something like a Barnsley? Council, a Rotherham postcode. We're like, yeah, I'm, I'm probably like 15 minutes off Sheffield, the Barnsley side of Sheffield. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, my, um, I, I know, I kind of know the Sheffield area anyway. My, um, my, one of my stepkids, or well, my stepkid is, is, is at university there in Sheffield. Oh, yeah. Um, but no, I've, I've played, I played at the corporation there and stuff like that in the past. Um, and, and, uh, Barnsley as well. Did I play in Barnsley? I think I did. Yeah, definitely did, and that and Rotherham and stuff as well. We we played like little pubs and stuff in that area back in the day. Um, so I know that, and that area always gives us a lot of love, you know. And 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 there's a lot of, like I say, a lot of bands from there. Obviously, Monkeys yourselves. Um, I think Kaiser Chiefs are from that area as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I think they're Leeds. I think they're from Leeds. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're they're so that's a different part of it. Isn't it? Um, <laughs> um, um, uh, Pulp as well. Jar isn't Jarvis from that up that area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, and 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 it's, there's a plenty of pedigrees, plenty of. And I I recently went to Sheffield and stuff, and it's changed so much, like yeah. since the last time I was there, kind of thing. And and obviously being a sort of an old grey city, which it was, now it's kind of rejuvenated and and partially like renovated, and obviously with the um, university and the town and everything, it just 
takes the h- half the town away or city away. Okay. Um, but even going outside it with some of the steel forges and stuff and everything around that now, and it's just it's crazy. But then there's some rundown bits which got turned into like a skate park or uh, I think it was food trucks and stuff, which I thought was pretty mm-hmm. cool. You know, so it's 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 a great little city. I say little city. It's a great city, like in that it that is. sort of area. It definitely is. It's got. A, I mean, maybe because I'm I'm there a lot, like drinking on a a week. Well, I say a weekend. We go we, me, our uh, Brandon, my dad. There's a bar. There must be ten of us in this group, and we've yeah. got like a Thursday club going off. Uh, and there's a part of Sheffield, Kellam Island, just off the. The other side of like West Street, off the beaten track a bit. Yeah, but that, it's sort of becoming like the trendy area, which oh. I don't like because it, it, it's better when it's nice and quiet. But it's it's yeah. all the cool pubs where it's not just like in the centre. Yes, and full of just people who won't be there normally. It's uh, it's it's good. Uh, it's a good city. It's very oh. friendly. It feels safe yeah. and the people are nice. Yeah, that's something my my kids said. It's like they do feel safe there, which is great. But they're they're currently now on a year abroad, so they're not even in Sheffield for this year. Um, <laughs> but they'll be back next year um, on that front as well. Um, but I got one last question for you, Kieran. Um, away from the band, away from music, what are your hobbies? What do you do to kind of, I don't know, chill out, get away from it? Have you got anything um, you know that you do? I, I- well, you can't see, but you, you might be able to. There's a yeah, bike. Bike, yeah, I can see that. I got, I got really into mountain biking a couple of years back. Um, then I moved out, and I'm just after sorting a, um, <laughs> a shed or a garage or somewhere where I can keep all the stuff that basically shouldn't be in my studio. Yeah. Upstairs, locked away. Uh, so I got, yeah, I got into biking, walking to a pub. Just to <laughs> go, yeah. Um, and what else? Golf. I have a double at golf, but I'm okay. shocking. Brandon's probably better than me. Play, play a bit of golf. Yeah. yeah this guitarist plays golf actually, so that's three out of four. And then apart from that, not not too much. I used to be into art when I was younger. Yeah. I think I it as a G, uh, GCSE, so I'm planning on getting back into that. I think. Nice. Cool, cool. I mean, like I've I walk. I do a lot. Of, I've got dogs, so I do a lot of walking through various areas of the country. I mean, I'm down south, uh, but golf. Um, when I'm able to, uh, I do play as well. Are you uh, a golfer? I am. Yeah. Well, I used to be more of a golfer back then, and my my brother was actually a pro uh, at one point as well. Um, but yeah, I used to play quite often. I used to live opposite like a driving range and stuff, and the course. Yeah. And, and stuff um i haven't played for a little while because i've got a dodgy back at the moment so i'm just kind of working on that but my clubs i can see them they are just behind me there um yeah. mocking me constantly <laughs> saying, why haven't you taken me out to the back your, uh, your handicap uh my handicap uh i did oh god when i had one because i haven't played for so long it was, it was around like a four or five which isn't too decent then um my my long game's really good my short game's all right my putting's uh, <laughs> So I've spent a lot of time on crazy golf uh, while I've been rehabbing my back to sort of improve my putting. So we'll yeah. see how that works. But yeah, uh, but yeah no, I, yeah. Um, used to play sort of a lot of the local courses around here. Um, and then I moved out to Florida for a bit and, and played a couple of courses out there when when I could. Um, yeah. uh, but like I said, my brother was the pro. So we'd be sort of following him around or occasionally caddying for him and stuff like that. And he was on the uh, Euro Pro Tour. yeah. yeah. For a little while uh it doesn't do it anymore you moved on from that um that world but um yeah no it's that the golf's quite an active thing my mum used to play and all that kind of stuff and i'm, a, yeah. I'm one of those weird left-handers as well so all right <laughs> everything i do is right-handed apart from cricket baseball and golf i play yeah. it's bizarre but it's a it's a tough game yeah you know it's, it's seriously tough like we 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 just don't play enough. Like last year or the year before, we we'll be were hammering it and uh, just so busy. Yeah. So I haven't really had time, but we've, we've been on a couple of golfing trips recently. Got invited to some as well, and nice. it's been a good laugh. But I think each time we play now, we, it's just a reminder where we just think we've got to try and squeeze some more golf in where we can. Yeah. But I mean, I might actually try within this next month before Shed 7, I might try and 
That's going to have Brandon and my dad to see if they fancy a few. Yeah. Fancy a I was going to say what you should do is look out for uh, when you're on tour, if there are any driving ranges nearby, and just take a couple of clubs with you. That's it, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, just to sort of get away from it if it gets a bit much, you know. It's a yeah. long tour, after all, but it's going to get chilly as well. Actually, it's going to get chilly as well. Find a top golf somewhere, you know, yeah. and then you get the old, uh, the old digital screens and everything like that. Um, but Kieran, uh, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Good luck with everything you've got going on. Obviously, the big tour coming up, the album all the tracks coming out and stuff like that. I will be watching and listening uh, and seeing what you guys get up to uh, on that front. Um, and I'll, I'm, I might even try and go to one of the shows. I'll have to see when I'm around. And yeah, uh, there's a couple there. of, we're trying, uh, drop us a message. We're trying to get your own guest list. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll drop your, yeah, I'll go through. Do I go through? Yeah, I'll go, don't worry, I'll go through thingy. Um, what are they called? Uh, the PR company. I can't yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll sort um, it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, I'll have a look, see what's near me and what I'm doing because uh, London looks like the nearest one, but I can get to other places as well, like Oxford and Bristol and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So kind of around there. But yeah, no, that sounds really cool. And I'd love to see Shed Sevens in Shed Seven in 15 years, I think. Like, yeah. So that would be worth it as well. Yeah, um, well. But cool. No. Kieran, thank you very much. Um, like I say, good luck with everything and thank you for your time this evening. I really do appreciate it. Oh, no worries, mate. Nice, nice chatting to you. Thank you, mate. Bye-bye.